All right, y'all. I don't know why I'm going to show you this. I'm ashamed of it, but this is what my garden ended up doing this year. But um, I had it all tilled up, looking nice. I mean, look very good. And uh, I decided I wanted to get some of these wood chips here. And uh, I think that was my downfall right there. I just got caught up in the wood chip thing. And, uh, and then I started planting all these, or started spreading all this wood chips. And, uh, just lost control. <laughs> you can see. Just lost control. I don't know. We'll see what happens here, but it's a mess. It's a mess, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Okay. But, uh, um, that was pretty rough, huh? Robert's situation. That's what that gentleman's name is. His name is Robert. Uh, I want to start off by saying thank you, Robert, for allowing me to use you or your video as an example of what can go wrong when it comes to this no-till back to Eden garden method that uh, a lot of people have struggles with and issues with. Folks, this is something that kind of really hit me hard, you know, when I saw his video, and I've seen many of them. Uh, when people talk about it won't work for them or it's a failure this no-till back to Eden uh, wood chip style gardening um, you can just see the disappointment because he's looking at all this work that is involved and entailed from here on out but I want to assure you Robert and and all you others it's not as bad as it looked this is easily fixable so just stay with me and uh, if you want to, keep in contact with me, and I'm going to help him through this. So, this is the primary reason why people are fearful of starting a no-till or back-to-Eden garden. Uh, primarily because so many people claim that it won't work. And this is probably the prominent reason there's other reasons but this is primarily the number one reason why people have uh, a back to Eden or no-till garden fail and that's what we're going to talk about if you hadn't been here before my name is Tom this is three basket living and uh, we're going to discuss this today so if I could, if I could get you to not focus so much on what we visibly see in the grasses and the weeds, you know, all that green foliage, and go a little bit deeper. And we don't have to go very far to do so. So that we get to the root of the problem. Because what we visually see is only a manifestation of where the true issue lies. And that is in the seed, the weed and grass seeds. Well, obviously, you know, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but the primary source of that seed is in the soil. It's already present in our ground, our garden areas. So this is what we have to deal with and what we want to address. Because if you remember in my previous video when I talked about how we want to build our garden or develop our garden in the same manner that we would do so with the house, and the primary focus and consideration that has to be done first is addressing the foundation. We need a good foundation before we can move forward in our house build. And it's the same with our garden. So this in lies should remind folks out there that we need to remove things that are not supportive or conducive to a good garden foundation. And also bring things in that might not be there in uh, 
good supply to our garden soil foundation. There's a few ways that we can go about doing this. One of the ways is what they call sterilization, where we sterilize the ground, to sterilize the soil. And that can be done by uh, a, a couple of uh, means. One is through chemicals, you know, big ag, corporate chemicals, man-made stuff, or even the natural organic chemicals, such as 30% uh, vinegar, for instance. Well, hopefully, if you're going to this type of gardening method, that you're not even considering the corporate ag store-bought or farm supply chemicals. I hope that's not what somebody's considering. We don't want to do that to sterilize our soil. And also the more organic methods, such as the 30% vinegar, although it's more natural and organic, that can still have a negative impact on our soil. Uh, for instance, you're going to effectively eliminate the grass and weeds and the seeds as well, but you're also going to have a negative impact on the rest of the soil food web. It's going to have an effect on the worms, the mycelium, fungi, bacteria, all of these things. Even though it's natural and organic, and it's going to take some time for all that to recuperate and heal. Not to mention, on top of that, that 30% vinegar, you're looking at spending around the ballpark of a $25 for one gallon of it. <laughs> That's can be pretty expensive you know if you're trying to treat the whole garden area now it works wonderful along fence lines and and and, and little spots and stuff like that but at $25 a gallon no thank you not for me especially with the negative impacts because it's going to have uh, a negative effect on the rest of the soil food web so another means is uh, through sterilization you can go the mechanical route or the more mechanical route that involves equipment and high heat torches propane and stuff like that but there again you got to wonder about one do you have the equipment to do so or can you afford the process and the fuel involved and on top of that when they put them torches you know on these big wands and they go along and, and scorch the ground they're in, in essence they're only affecting the soil surface maybe a little bit below half inch maybe up to an inch they're not going to address uh, the rest of those dormant seeds that lie below that level. So that brings us to my method that I am doing on my particular garden, and I have been doing. But before we go on to that, I want to put two nuggets in the back of your head for you to hang on to for a minute. When we talk about these seeds and they're dormant, they say that a lot of these dormant weed and grass seeds can lie viable and dormant in our soil for 10 plus years. So keep that in mind. The other thing is while doing so, all they're doing is they're waiting, lying in wait for their opportune moment, that aha moment. And that aha moment is sunlight exposure. Some say that it only takes for a lot of seeds to be activated or go into germination mode. It only takes one-tenth of one second of sun exposure for that seed to come alive and be activated. You can cover it up afterward, but it doesn't matter. It's too late. It's already been triggered, and it's going to go into germination mode. That's why, in Robert's case, like he's got 12 inches of wood chips on his garden, it doesn't matter. It's going to find and work its way in any way it can to get to the surface so that it can reproduce more seed, which is not a good thing, and, and survive. So keep that in mind. So this next method that I am doing, and, and, and there's others out there, is what they call solarization. Not sterilization, but solarization. And that's in essence just using the power of the sun, obviously. And we do so with plastic or tarps. I'm not a big fan of plastic. I haven't found a plastic that is reliable and durable enough for me and worthy of my dime. I use tarps. But if you do have plastic, typically what you're going to find, you're going to find somebody that will utilize clear plastics or black plastics. 
So in utilizing the clear plastic here, by doing so, you're going to smother everything out, you know, and you're also going to get a little higher soil temperature, you know, on the ground when that sun is beaming down and through that plastic. And it will smother things out and kill it off. That, high, that higher heat is going to help. But some people are going to run into the issue because they have some sort of super weeds. They are more heat resistant and drought tolerant. Uh, type of weeds and they can actually survive underneath that clear plastic and continue to grow and eventually just bust through that plastic. So as opposed to the clear plastic, if you were going to go plastic, I recommend going black. Now you're going to have a little less uh, temperature on the soil with utilizing the black plastic, but you're still going to smother everything off or smother everything out and kill it off and along with um, some of those viable dormant seeds on the surface. But more importantly for those uh, harder grasses and weeds that are heat resistant and, and drought tolerant, you're going to uh, eliminate the photosynthesis process to continue for them things to, to uh, live and survive. So you'll in essence probably kill it all off. Now. Here's where it comes to be important because when you put your tarps down, I'm going to just use tarps for an example because that's what I'm doing. You'll see that in this picture here. I got 3,600 square feet in which I do this. <clears throat> so now that we've done that, we're going to solarize, cover our ground and our tarps. And we're going to do so for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe up to three, four, five weeks. It depends on the time of the year that you're going to do this and your location. But you'll, in essence, know by just checking, you'll know when you've killed everything off. The higher the heat or, you know, the warmer the temperatures, the quicker this is going to take place. But in doing so, when you got everything killed off, what I do is I pull off my plastic or tarps. And then I bring in my amendments. I'm bringing in compost, leaves, uh, pine needles, uh, wood ash, shredded paper, humic acid, uh, maybe uh, azomite, um, or any other microorganisms that I want to bring into my soil, you know, IMOs, indigenous microorganisms, whatever nutrients and whatever media you want to bring in outside of hay, straw, or grass clippings. Do not bring anything, this is my suggestion, is not to bring anything that has any chance of any viable seeds being in it, unless it is properly sterilized or composted down to uh, render those viable seeds inert. But I'm getting off track here. Bring in your inputs, two or three, or inch or two of compost and any other uh, inputs that you want to bring in and then bring out your tiller or plow. Yes, I said tiller and plow. <laughs> we are building a foundation here. We're not at the no-till point yet. We want to create a foundation first. By doing so, we're going to do four things here. Number one, we're going to mix in all that organic compost and nutrient-based media, that inputs that you bring in, and we're going to mix it in with the soil because that is the true growing medium, which consists of sand, silt, and clay. You're going to mix all this stuff in with your soil, number one. Number two, it gives you an opportunity to remove, dislodge any other larger rocks that you would like to remove out of that foundation. Not great for a garden build, great for a house build, but not for the garden. Number three, you're going to aerate, fluff it up with that tiller or plow, and which allows even more decomposition to take place for any like leaves and pine needles that you might bring in. And fourthly, if that's a word, is fourthly a word? Fourthly, <laughs> you're going to dislodge or you're going to bring up to the surface even more of those dormant, viable weed and grass seeds to the surface. And that is a good thing. Because at that point, you're going to leave your tarps and plastic off. What I do, typically in the evening, depending on the time of the year, I'm going to water it down. 
not in extensively. I just want to make sure that that seed is in contact with the soil. It has the moisture and I'm going to allow the sun exposure to hit those dormant seeds so that they can have their aha moment and be activated. Because at this point, I'm not growing fruits and vegetables in my foundation build. My intent is to intentionally grow weeds and grasses in my garden. And here's the reason why. I want to let them grow only to about an inch, maybe two inches or three inches, depending on the, the species of grass or weed that you have. And then at that moment in time, before they go to seed, because that is important. We don't want to let them to go to seed. Just let them grow a little bit. And then you're going to zap them. You're going to bring your tarps back on and solarize it again. And, 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 and kill all that uh, weed seed and grass seed or weeds and grasses down. Let me explain it to you like this. <clears throat> Think about those sci-fi movies like Star Wars and Star Trek. You know how in those movies, all these spaceships, they have this uh, force field around them. You know, this protective barrier. And it's hard to eliminate, you know, one another or the enemy with this force field around them. Well, that's how I look at these seeds that can lie dormant for 10 plus years in my ground. They have this protective shield and coating on them, acts like a force field. And it's very difficult to break through that without utilizing these harsh chemicals or extensive mechanical measures that can be costly to us. But if we can allow them to be tricked out of their protective shell, past that force field, dropping it, and they sprout and ger they germinate and sprout, then they become vulnerable again. Same thing in the movies, you know, in Star Trek and everything. That's when we want to attack them and knock them out. And that's in essence what we're doing. And once that takes place, you solarize again for another week or two or however long it takes. You pull your tarps off again, bring in more compost or amendments, you know, depending on how extensive your clay and sand material is, you bring it in. Bring out the tiller and plow and do it all over again. Aerate, remove more rock, doing the mixing, and there again, bringing up more dormant seed to the surface, water it, encourage it to grow, sprout, it becomes vulnerable, bam, hit it again with the tarps. That's how I go about doing this. Now, I want to put those nuggets at you uh, in the beginning, okay? And, and I do so in reference to this cardboard and newspaper style of uh, putting on the ground. I think it's more of a lasagna type method. I don't encourage or recommend that. And here's why. It's because of those two nuggets. That cardboard and paper is effective at first, but it's only addressing the weaker manifestation of our source problem those things that have already germinated and sprouted. It will drown and cut that stuff off. It will kill it off. But we don't get the effectiveness of the solar heat through our plastic and our tarps to kill off maybe some other dormant seeds. And on top of that, once that stuff breaks down, the cardboard and newspaper, which is going to feed into the soil, and the worms are going to love it and enjoy it, but it doesn't address the dormant seeds. It doesn't kill off them. It's only the vegetation. And then you bring in compost, uh, inch or two of compost on top of that, and then your covering, you know, or mulches and wood chips. Now what you have to do is you have to walk on eggshells when it comes to garden. That's what I think of it like. When you go to making your little furrows or uh, with your hoe and rake or you take your hand tool if you're going to do any transplanting of plants from your greenhouse and you dig a hole in the ground what in essence is going to take place is you're going to work up and disturb that area where their dormant seeds are lying in wait and on top of that we have taken their real estate and we have just juiced it up and primed it up with this rich nutrient composted stuff on top of them and now they're really going to have the food sources that they need to thrive and survive not to mention at the end of the growing season some people like to pull their plants up out of the ground they don't do the chop and drop and leave the root ball in especially with like tomatoes and corn and stuff like that so they pull it up 
And what are we doing? We are potentially bringing up all these dormant weed and grass seeds up to the surface. They get their one second of sunlight exposure, that aha moment. They're in this nutrient-rich, moist soil, and they're going to go to town. And if those things grow alongside your plants, you know, and they go unchecked, especially you know as your plants grow bigger and that weed or grass seed you know uh, continue that weed or grass continues to grow and you don't catch it and then it goes to fruitation and it produces literally hundreds of other grass and weed seeds and now we got an issue so that's why i don't suggest utilizing the uh, cardboard and paper uh, means of, of doing this because it only eliminates the the surface problem and now you got to worry about kids digging in the garden or you or maybe your dog or something and if you're gonna you're gonna bring up some of those dormant seeds at some point in time that's going to take place that's why we want to address the seed first in the foundation build it up you're going to have this rich loamy soil foundational base to that garden with all your organic media and material that you incorporate and then when you're satisfied and done then you bring in another inch or two of your compost and then put on the roof or the covering only your two to three inch max of wood chips and I believe you're going to be golden I hope you can see how this can become a problem when we don't address the things, the source, the root of the problem that's within our foundation of our gardens that we want to build first. I hope that also you come back because I'm going to address some other ways that these weeds and grasses can become a potential problem in our garden. This is only the first uh, source. I'm going to address other ones in the upcoming video. I hope that you come back. I hope you pass it along. Share the information with your families and friends, especially those that have been discouraged with all this false information or this lack of information in all these, these other videos. And they're encouraged to go about doing this more natural, organic, back to Eden, wood chip style, no-till garden that you can build from scratch in heavy clay soil, sandy soil, or whatever. We just take care of what needs to be taken care of first in the foundation and we'll have great success. Have a nice day. May all your branches become full of fruit and I hope to see you next time. Whoa.